Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Korean ebook before it's gone. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, 
you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello everyone, I'm Noh Gyeongjin. You have met the teacher of your life in your life. Do you have to say the words of the teacher of the teacher of our hearts in our hearts? In this lesson, the teacher of 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 the teacher. 선생님과 관련된 단어 중에는 군사부일체라는 말이 있습니다. 여러분은 이 말의 뜻이 어떤 뜻인지 알고 계세요? 정답은 이 비디오 마지막에 알려드릴게요. 스승의 날은 공휴일이 아니어서 학생들은 평소처럼 등교를 합니다. 하지만 교실 안에서는 학생들이 준비한 깜짝 이벤트가 열리는데요. 스승의 날이 되면 학생들은 교실에서 선생님께 스승의 날 노래를 함께 불러드리고 교탁 위에 케이크를 놓고 선생님 감사합니다를 외치곤 합니다. 또 다함께 커다란 종이에 선생님에 대한 감사의 메시지를 적은 뒤이 놀링 페이퍼를 선생님께 전달해 드리기도 합니다. 또 스승의 날이 되면 일일 교사 체험 행사도 열립니다. 학생들이 번갈아 가면서 한 시간씩 교사가 되어서 수업을 하는 행사인데요. 직접 수업을 하면서 선생님의 고충을 이해해 볼수 있겠죠? 또 부모님 중한 분이 학교로 찾아와서 스승의 날 선생님 대신 교사가 되어보는 일일 부모 교사 행사가 열리기도 합니다. 졸업을 한 뒤에도 보고 싶은 선생님이 있다면 어떻게 해야 할까요? 한국에서는 스승의 날이 되면 예전에 다녔던 학교에 찾아가 학창 시절 자신을 가르쳤던 선생님을 찾아뵙습니다. 그래서 스승의 날 교무실에 가면 재학생 뿐만이 아니라 졸업생도 쉽게 찾아볼 수 있다고 하네요. 여러분 그거 아세요? 한국에서는 한 학년이 3월에 시작해서 다음에 2월에 끝나는데요. 선생님께 감사의 의미를 전달하는 데에는 한 학년이 끝나는 2월이 더 적합하기 때문에 스승의 날을 2월로 옮기자는 의견도 있습니다. 자, 그럼 여기서 오늘의 퀴즈의 정답을 알려드릴게요. 군사부 일체의 군은 임금, 사는 선생님, 부는 부모님이라는 의미입니다. 즉, 임금과 선생님과 부모님은 같이 존경해야 한다는 의미인 거죠. 이번 레슨 어떠셨어요? 새롭게 알게 된 내용들 많이 있으셨나요? 여러분의 나라에서는 스승의 날을 어떻게 보내고 있나요? 코리안클래스 원어원닷컴 코멘트란에 남겨주세요. 그럼 다음 시간에 만나요. <목소리> 여러분 안녕하세요. 노경진입니다. 만 18세는 성년이 되어 한 나라의 시민으로 인정받게 되는 나이죠? 
세계 여러 나라에서는 성년의 날, 축하 파티를 열고 성년이 된 사람들을 축하하는데요. 한국에서도 매년 5월 셋째 주, 월요일 성년의 날이 되면 만 18세가 된 사람들을 축하하는 여러 행사가 열립니다. 이번 레슨에서는 이 성년의 날에 대해서 알아보겠습니다. 여러분은 성년이 된 사람들이 가장 받고 싶어하는 선물이 뭔지 아세요? 정답은 이 비디오 마지막에 알려드릴게요. 한국에서는 성년의 날, 가장 많이 주고받는 선물이 두 가지 있습니다. 바로 장미와 향수입니다. 성년이 되는 만 18세는 보통 한국 나이로 20세입니다. 한국에서는 태어나자마자 한 살이 되기 때문인데요. 그래서 성년이 된 사람에게는 성년의 날 부모님이나 친구들이 장미꽃 20송이를 선물로 줍니다. 그래서 성년의 날 대학교 캠퍼스에 가면 장미꽃을 한가득 든 대학생들을 쉽게 볼수 있다고 하네요. 두 번째로 가장 많이 주고받는 선물은 향수입니다. 보통 한국에서 중고등학교 시절에는 향수를 거의 사용하지 않다가 대학에 와서 향수를 사용하기 시작하는데요. 그래서 향수는 어른이 되었다는 상징적인 의미를 담고 있습니다. 또 향수는 오랫동안 나를 기억해 주세요 라는 의미가 있다고 하는데요. 그래서 오랫동안 기억에 남는 사람이 되라는 의미로 성인이 된 사람에게 향수를 선물한다고 하네요. 한국에서는 옛날에도 성년이 된 사람들에게 특별한 선물을 주었습니다. 성년이 되면 어른이 되었다는 의미로 남자에게는 상투를 틀어 갓을 씌우고 여자들에게는 비녀를 꽂아주었다고 하네요. 여러분 그거 아세요? 최근에는 성년의 날 축하를 받기보다는 다른 사람을 도우면서 의미 있게 하루를 보내는 사람들이 많아지고 있다는 걸요. 성년의 날 주변에 있는 노인분들이나 장애인 복지시설을 방문해서 다른 사람들을 도우며 하루를 보내는 사람이 점점 많아지고 있다고 하네요. 자, 그럼 여기서 오늘의 퀴즈의 정답 알려드릴게요. 성년이 된 사람들이 성년의 날 가장 받고 싶은 선물은 바로 키스라고 하네요. 사랑하는 사람에게 장미꽃 20송이와 함께 이 선물을 받으면 기분 좋은 성년의 날을 보낼 수 있을 것 같네요. 이번 레슨 어떠셨어요? 새롭게 알게 된 내용들 많이 있으셨나요? 여러분의 나라에서는 성년의 날 어떤 선물을 주고받나요? 코리안클래스 원어원닷컴 코멘트 란에 남겨주세요. 그럼 다음 시간에 만나요. <목소리> 여러분 안녕하세요. 노경진입니다. 한국에서는 발렌타인데이가 되면 다른 나라와 마찬가지로 사랑하는 사람에게 초콜릿을 선물합니다. 또 평소 좋아하던 사람에게 사랑을 고백하면서 초콜릿을 선물하기도 하고요. 이번 레슨에서는 한국 사람들이 2월 14일 발렌타인데이를 어떻게 보내는지 알아보겠습니다. 2월 14일 발렌타인데이 외에도 한국에는 4월 14일 블랙데이도 있습니다. 여러분은 이 블랙데이가 어떤 날인지 알고 계세요? 정답은 이 비디오 마지막에 알려드릴게요. 발렌타인데이 날 사랑하는 사람에게 고백하고 싶은데 용기가 없을 때 어떻게 해야 할까요? 한국에서는 이날 고백을 대신해주는 서비스를 이용할 수 있습니다. 이 서비스를 이용하면 서비스 회사에서 상대방에게 대신 찾아가서 초콜릿을 전달하며 사랑을 대신 고백해 준다고 하네요. 발렌타인데이가 되면 또 사랑 메시지를 공개된 장소에서 보여주는 행사도 여기저기서 열립니다. 서울 한 봉판에 있는 커다란 전광판에 사랑하는 사람의 이름과 사랑 고백 메시지를 보여주는 거죠. 최근에는 인터넷 사이트에서 무료로 사랑 고백 메시지를 띄워주는 서비스가 인기라고 하네요. 발렌타인데이에 
공연장과 같은 곳에서는 연인들에게 초콜릿을 나눠주고 공연 중간에 키스 타임을 마련해 줍니다. 키스 타임은 공연 중간에 갑자기 불을 꺼서 사랑하는 사람과 키스를 할수 있는 시간인데요. 한국의 연인들에게는 공개된 장소에서 키스하는 것보다 이런 키스 타임이 더 인기라고 하네요. 여러분 그거 아세요? 요즘에는 발렌타인데이에 초콜릿 대신 떡으로 만든 케이크를 선물하면서 남들과 다른 발렌타인데이를 보내는 사람들이 많아지고 있다고 합니다. 자, 그럼 여기서 오늘의 퀴즈 정답 알려드릴게요. 한국에서는 4월 14일을 블랙데이라고 부릅니다. 이날은 사랑하는 사람 없이 혼자서 발렌타인데이를 보낸 사람들이 친구들과 함께 짜장면을 먹는 날이라고 하네요. 이번 레슨 어떠셨어요? 새롭게 알게 된 내용들 많이 있으셨나요? 여러분의 나라에서는 발렌타인데이를 어떻게 보내나요? 코리안클래스 원어원닷컴 코멘트란에 남겨주세요. 그럼 다음 시간에 만나요. <목소리> 여러분 안녕하세요. 노경진입니다. 여러분은 빼빼로라는 과자 알고 계세요? 기다란 막대기 모양 과자에 초콜릿을 덮어 만든 건데요. 꼭 알파벳 I나 숫자 1을 닮은 모습입니다. 그래서 한국에서는 빼빼로를 닮은 숫자 1이 가득한 11월 11일이 되면 주변 사람들과 함께 빼빼로를 주고 받습니다. 이번 레슨에서는 11월 11일 빼빼로 데이에 대해서 알아보겠습니다. 11월 11일은 빼빼로 데이죠? 그럼 3이 두번 들어가 있는 3월 3일은 무슨 날일까요? 정답은 이 비디오 마지막에 알려드릴게요. 빼빼로 데이 날 주인공은 뭐니뭐니 뭐니 해도 과자 빼빼로겠죠? 그래서 이 날이 되면 연인이나 친구들끼리 빼빼로를 주고 받습니다. 또 가격이 별로 비싸지 않은 과자이기 때문에 회사 동료에게 나눠주는 경우도 많은데요. 그래서 빼빼로 데이 날 퇴근하는 직장인들 가방 안을 보면 빼빼로 상자를 쉽게 찾아볼 수 있습니다. 빼빼로 데이에는 과자뿐 아니라 빼빼로에 관련된 여러 가지 물건을 선물로 주고받기도 하는데요. 빼빼로 모양의 쿠션을 선물로 주기도 하고 종이로 된 빼빼로 상자를 붙여서 하트 모양으로 만든 다음 연인에게 선물을 주기도 합니다. 또 초콜릿으로 된 빼빼로 말고도 딸기맛 빼빼로, 아몬드 빼빼로 등 다양한 빼빼로 과자를 주고받기도 합니다. 빼빼로 데이는 사실 빼빼로를 만드는 과자 회사의 마케팅으로 시작됐는데요. 그래서 빼빼로 데이를 남들과 다르게 보내는 사람들도 있습니다. 이런 경우 11월 11일에 빼빼로 과자 대신 길쭉한 모양의 가래떡을 주고받는데요. 하얀색의 평범한 가래떡 뿐만 아니라 빨간색, 노란색, 파란색 등 다양한 색깔의 가래떡을 선물하거나 가래떡으로 만든 음식을 만들어 선물하기도 한다고 하네요. 여러분 그거 아세요? 여자 중고등학생들은 빼빼로 데이가 되면 빼빼로처럼 날씬해지자는 의미로 서로 이 과자를 선물한다고 합니다. 자, 그럼 여기서 오늘의 퀴즈의 정답 알려드릴게요. 숫자 3이 두개 들어있는 3월 3일은 바로 삼겹살 데이입니다. 그래서 이날은 평소보다 사람들이 삼겹살집을 많이 찾는다고 하네요. 이번 레슨 어떠셨어요? 새롭게 알게 된 내용들 많이 있으셨나요? 여러분의 나라에서는 빼빼로 데이처럼 숫자 모양과 관련된 기념일이 있나요? 코리안클래스 원원닷컴 코멘트란에 남겨주세요. 마지막 레슨까지 함께 해주셔서 감사합니다. 안녕히 계세요. Want to transform your driving time into language learning time? How much time do you spend in your car every day? 30 minutes? More than an hour? Why not put this huge amount of time to good use? 
Instead of just listening to the radio during your daily commute, you could be learning a new language instead. Here are three easy methods for learning a language in your car. You can put them to use right away with the help of our language learning program. First, you can listen to fun audio lessons by real teachers. Listening to lessons while in the car allows you to focus on the road as you listen and learn. In every one of our three to 15 minute lessons, our teachers teach you conversations, new phrases, and cultural points. Audio is the only learning medium that lets you learn and drive safely at the same time. So take advantage of all our audio lessons available. Second, you can set your lessons on autoplay and go hands-free. Our autoplay feature lets you keep your hands on the wheel without even reaching for your device. Just set your lessons to autoplay one by one with our Innovative Language 101 app and never have to interrupt your focus on driving to switch to a new lesson. Third, you can repeat out loud and speak from your very first lesson. You wanna speak a new language too, right? Well, you'll start learning conversations minutes into your lessons. All you have to do is listen and repeat out loud. Our teachers take you step-by-step step through all of the words, phrases, translations, and grammar points. You're even prompted to speak out loud and repeat. The result? You understand it all and can speak your new language. Turn your commute into language learning time and have fun at the same time. Learning doesn't have to be a big commitment, like signing up for a college class. It can be fun and easy. In fact, it's as easy as pressing play. Our language learning programs will do the work for you. And with the exposure you get while driving on your daily commute, you'll be speaking and understanding real life language quickly. The best part? You can finally learn without even changing your schedule. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Imagine you're in a Korean restaurant. You are ready to order and need to get the waiter's attention. What do you say? 안녕하세요, 이재입니다. Jewi here. Anyone can learn how to order food in a Korean restaurant. In this lesson, you'll learn how. Mark and Karen are getting ready to order at a Korean restaurant. Let's watch. 아주머니, 여기 주문이요. 뭘로 드릴까요? 김치찌개 하나랑 순두부찌개 하나 주세요. 아, 물도 하나 주세요. 물은 셀프입니다. 아주머니, 저희 김치 좀더 주세요. Now the lesson focus. Here's how to order food at a Korean restaurant. Korean restaurants are a little different from other types of restaurants. When you're ready to order in a Korean restaurant, you simply need to raise your hand and say 저기요, which means excuse me there. If you're eating in a traditional Korean restaurant, it's normal to address the female staff in the restaurant as 아주머니 if they are over the age of 30. To male staff, you can use 아저씨. Listen again to what Mark said. 아주머니, 여기 주문이요. If it is too loud for the waiters to hear you, call the staff again. It's not rude. Some of the most popular Korean dishes people order are kimchi jjigae or kimchi stew and sundubu jjigae or stew with soft tofu. These foods are a bit spicy, so if you don't like spicy foods, look for a dish called bulgogi. Bulgogi is sliced and seasoned barbecued beef. This is another popular dish among foreigners. If you are not quite sure what to order, ask the waiter, 여기 뭐가 가장 맛있어요? It means, what's the most delicious food here? And they will tell you a few of their most popular dishes. When you finally decide on what to order, say the name of the food you want and say 주세요. Listen to what Mark said. 김치찌개 하나랑 순두부찌개 하나 주세요. Simply say the name of the food and add 주세요, meaning please give. If you just need one kimchi stew, for example, you can say 김치찌개 하나 주세요. Most dishes are served with a serving of rice and assorted side dishes for free.
These side dishes are called banchan. They can be refilled for free. You can get more by saying the food name and 좀더 주세요. For example, if you need more kimchi, you can say 김치 좀더 주세요. Please give us more kimchi. If you need a bottle of water, say 물좀더 주세요. It means please give me a bottle of water. Sometimes restaurants have a sign that says 물은 셀프입니다. This literally means water is for self-service. They post it to say you should pour your own water, so look around first for the sign before you ask them to bring water. Like this quick lesson? Watch the full version at koreanclass101.com to understand the whole dialogue. While you're there, learn about Korean culture with our audio lessons and cultural word lists. Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. Want more Korean videos like this? Subscribe to our channel. Imagine you're meeting your neighbor for the first time. How would you greet him or her? 안녕하세요, 이재입니다. 재위 here. Anyone can learn how to properly introduce themselves to a neighbor. In this lesson, you'll learn how. Mark is introducing himself and his family to their neighbor. Let's watch. 안녕하세요. 304호에 새로 이사 온 마크입니다. 아, 안녕하세요. 무슨 일이세요? 이사 떡좀 드리려고요. 뭘 이런 걸 다. 가족분이세요? 네, 제 아내랑 아이들입니다. 그렇군요. 그럼 잘 부탁드립니다. 네, 떡잘 먹을게요. Now, the lesson focus. Here's how you can introduce yourself to your neighbor. In Korea, it's common to introduce yourself, not only to the neighbors on either side of you, but if you live in an apartment complex, the neighbors directly above and below you as well. When you introduce yourself to your neighbor, you will need to use the polite version of the introductory sentence. First, you'll say, 안녕하세요, followed by your name, and 입니다. Hello, I'm your name. In Korean, it's tradition to offer your neighbors red bean rice cakes when you move in. These are called patok or shirutok. They're considered to bring good luck and prosperity to one's home. However, these cakes must be served fresh, so if you're unsure whether your neighbors will be home or not, a safe alternative would be to bring kim, ready to eat dried seaweed. This lasts longer and doesn't have to be eaten right away. After you've introduced yourself and given your gift, you can say, 잘 부탁드립니다. Please take care of me. This implies that you hope to maintain a good relationship with your neighbor. If you plan on moving to a new house or apartment, and if you've ever watched a Korean drama, you may have noticed that many Koreans eat 자장면 noodles with black soybean sauce during or after a move. One of the reasons for this is it's cheap, and you can get it delivered to your house quickly. After you've finished eating, the restaurant will come and pick the dirty dishes up, eliminating the need to wash or unpack anything. Another reason is that this food is a noodle dish, or in Korean, 면. Just like noodles are long in length, they represent the longevity of other things. Therefore, eating these noodles is a symbol of the long and peaceful life you plan on having in your new home. Like this quick lesson? Watch the full version at koreanclass101.com to understand the whole dialogue. While you're there, learn all about Korean culture with our audio lessons and cultural world lists. Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. 안녕히 계세요. Imagine you're hungry and don't want to leave your home. You want to order food over the phone, but what should you say? 안녕하세요, 이재입니다. 재위 here. Anyone can learn how to order food delivery over the phone in Korea. In this lesson, you'll learn how. 
Mark is at home calling a fried chicken restaurant. Let's watch. 여보세요. 종로 치킨입니다. 아, 여보세요. 배달 되나요? 네, 됩니다. 그럼 양념 치킨 한 마리 가져다 주세요. 양념 하나요? 네. 주소 말씀해 주세요. 하나 오피스텔 304호요. 하나 오피스텔 304호요? 알겠습니다. Now the lesson focus. Here's how to order food over the phone. Do you know one of the most popular types of food that people order and have delivered to them in Korea? It's chicken or in Korean, tongdak. When you order chicken in Korea, you can choose from a wide range of flavors. You can order fried chicken or fried chicken or maybe chicken with spicy sauce or yangnyeom chicken. It costs around 15,000 Korean won, which is around 12 to 15 US dollars per order of chicken. If you're pressed for time or really hungry, then ordering jajangmyeon is your best option. Jajangmyeon is a Chinese Korean dish made of black soybean paste and noodles and is very cheap. It costs only 3,000 Korean won or around 3 US dollars per dish. Compared to other foods, jajangmyeon is prepared quickly. And the delivery time is much shorter than chicken restaurants with an average of 15 to 20 minutes. If you live in Korea, you can find flyers almost every day in front of your door. You can get the name of the food and the price there. Sometimes, you can find a book of flyers which show the menu and the price of food available for delivery around your town. If you don't have any flyers, look on the website of popular chains such as BBQ Chicken for chicken and Domino Pizza for pizza. You can simply say the food name and say 가져다 주세요, which means please bring as Mark did. 그럼 양념 치킨 한 마리 가져다 주세요. Then the staff will say 주소 말씀해 주세요. Tell me your address. Or 주소 어떻게 되세요? What's your address? These are honorific phrases that are used to ask your address. 주소 말씀해 주세요. When you give your address to the staff, you can start with the street address or the building's name as Mark did. 하나 오피스텔 304호요. Mark lives in Opistel, which is a popular type of accommodation in South Korea. He gives the name of the building, Hana Opistel, then says 304호, the room number. Make sure that when you give your room number, you say the counter ho as in 304호. Ho is the counter for room numbers. Usually, you don't need to give the full address when the restaurant is in your town. Only when you live in a regular house do you need to give the street name and the street numbers, for example, 사랑길 3-2 or 3-2 사랑 street. You can find the street name and the street number right next to the front door of your building. Once the staff have your address, you're set to go. It usually takes about 30 to 40 minutes to get your food delivered. If you want to check how long it will take, ask 얼마나 걸려요? This means how long will it take? If you want to pay by your credit card, make sure to ask 카드 돼요? Which means is your credit card okay? If you don't ask, the staff might not bring the credit card reader when they deliver the food. When the delivery staff come, they will ring the bell. They will say 치킨 왔습니다, which means chicken is here. Or 중국집이요, which means Chinese restaurant here. Open the door, get your food, and give the bills or credit card to the staff. Like this quick lesson? Watch the full version at koreanclass101.com to understand the whole dialogue. While you're there, learn about Korean culture with our audio lessons and cultural word lists. Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. Imagine you're in a hurry and need to get somewhere fast. You decide to take a taxi, but how do you do it? 안녕하세요, 이재입니다. Jay here. Anyone can learn how to use a taxi in Korea. In this lesson, you'll learn how. 
Mark and his family are on their way to a movie theater. Let's watch. 안녕하세요. 네, 어서 오세요. 홍대에 가주세요. 네, 쇼핑하러 가세요. 아니요, 영화 보러 가요. 아, 여기서 세워주세요. 네. 팀원이 되나요? 잠시만요. 이제 대주세요. 감사합니다. Now the lesson focus. Here's how to take a taxi in Korea. There are three types of taxis in Korea. Orange taxis are owned by a taxi company, silver taxis are privately owned by the driver, and black taxis are considered luxury vehicles. The fare in orange and silver taxis is reasonably priced, but drivers are hesitant to drive into small alleys or roads. The fare in black taxis is 1.5 times more expensive than the regular fare because the drivers are good-mannered and will drive anywhere. They will provide English-speaking drivers or access to interpretation services. To signal a taxi driver, simply raise your hand and wave it up and down. When the taxi arrives, open the door and take your seat. What did Mark say when he took the taxi? 안녕하세요. In Korea, it's okay to sit next to the driver even if you're riding alone. And if you're riding with someone older than you, ask the person to sit in the 상석 or upper seat. The upper seat is located behind the front passenger seat and is considered a more honorable seat. To give directions to the driver, say your destination and 가주세요. 홍대에 가주세요. Sometimes, the driver may not know the location. In that situation, show them the map on your phone and say 여기인데요. It means it's here. Or, if you have the address written on a piece of paper, give it to the taxi driver. The driver will enter the address into the navigation system to get the route. Once you've arrived, how can you say please stop here? Listen to what Mark said. 아, 여기서 세워주세요. It means, please stop here. When the taxi stops, check the price on the meter and say how you want to process the payment. Mark wanted to pay by T-Money, the transportation card, so he said, T-Money 되나요? If you already know you can pay by your transportation card, you can say, T-Money로 해주세요. It means, I'll pay with T-Money. When you want to pay using cash, say, 현금으로 할게요. It means, I'll pay with cash. Or, if you want to pay by your credit card, first ask, 카드 되나요? To mean, is your credit card okay? Note that some private taxis don't accept credit cards. If the driver says yes, say, 카드로 할게요, which means, I'll pay with a credit card. Tipping is not necessary in Korean taxis, so you'll receive all of your change back. Like this quick lesson? Watch the full version at koreanclass101.com to understand the whole dialogue. While you're there, learn about Korean culture with our audio lessons and cultural word lists. Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. Imagine you're waiting in line at the movie ticketing counter. It's your turn to buy tickets next. What do you say? 안녕하세요, 이재입니다. Jewi here. Anyone can learn how to purchase movie tickets in Korea. In this lesson, you'll learn how. Mark and his family are buying tickets at the movie theater. Let's watch. 네, 다음 분. 슈퍼맨 영화 티켓을 사고 싶은데요. 시간은 언제가 좋으세요? 오늘 오후 3시로 해주세요. 몇 분이세요? 4명입니다. 골드 클래스요? 음, 아니요. 그냥 일반 상영관으로 해주세요. 자리는 어떻게 드릴까요? 가운데 있는 자리로 주세요. Now the lesson focus.
Here's how to purchase movie tickets in Korea. There are many special types of movie theaters in Korea. These include IMAX, 4DX, and Luxurious Class. 4DX theaters feature moving and vibrating movie seats that make screenings more interactive. If you're watching an action movie or racing movie, 4DX is a must try. It costs one and a half times more than regular tickets. At most chain theaters, you can sit in special theaters with gold class and luxurious class level seats. At these theaters, you can find comfortable couches, seats, and high quality service. It costs three times more than regular theaters. Gold and luxurious seats are great for dates because you can have items like wine delivered to your seat. And if you pay extra, you can have your pictures printed on the ticket to create a special gift. After you choose which class you want to see the movie, you can choose the movie and your screening time. Hear what Mark said first. Superman 영화 티켓을 사고 싶은데요. It means, I want to buy movie tickets for Superman. You can replace this part with the movie that you want to see. Then, you can say what time you want to see the movie. In the dialogue, Mark said, 오늘 오후 3시로 해주세요. 3 p.m. today, please. When you purchase tickets at the movie theater or buy them on your mobile application, you can choose where to sit. In Korea, all seats are signed before the screening when you purchase your tickets. When purchasing your tickets, you will be given the options 앞자리, front seat, 가운데 자리, middle seat, and 뒷자리, back seat. Most Koreans prefer seats in the middle, so it's good to choose seats in the back if you want to avoid crowded areas. In Korea, you can also reserve and purchase tickets from your smartphone. Each theater has its own respective application that you can download. Once you download the app, choose the theater closest to you and the film you want to see. When navigating theater applications, look for the words 극장 or theater, 상영관 or screen, and 예약하기 or reserve. If you can find and understand these words, it will be easy to reserve your tickets over the phone. Like this quick lesson? Watch the full version at koreanclass101.com to understand the whole dialogue. While you're there, learn about Korean culture with our audio lessons and cultural word lists. Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. Welcome to koreanclass101.com's 3분 한국어 The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Korean 안녕하세요, Amy예요. 반가워요. Hi, I'm Amy. Nice to meet you. In this series, 3분 한국어, we are going to learn basic Korean expressions. It's super easy, and it takes only 3 minutes. First of all, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Korean. There are a few different ways to do it depending on how formal you want to be. Let's first look at an informal way to introduce yourself. 안녕, Amy야. 반가워. Hi, I'm Amy. Nice to meet you. 안녕, Amy야. 반가워. Here, 안녕 means peace. So literally, you say peace to say hello in Korean. Next, you can say your name. Then add the sentence ending particle, 야. My name is Amy. So I say, Amy야. Finally, you say 반가워. 반가워 means nice to meet you. Now you try it. Start by saying 안녕. Then say your name followed by 야. If your name is David, you can say 데이비드야. Finally, say 반가워. 안녕 데이비드야. 반가워. Now let's see a formal version. 안녕하세요. 에이미예요. 반가워요. Hi, I'm Amy. Nice to meet you. 안녕하세요. 에이미예요. 반가워요. What has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at this together. First, 안녕 has to change to 안녕하세요. 하세요 is the verb meaning to do. If you add 하세요, 
Next to 안녕, it becomes more formal and polite. 안녕하세요. Next, you can replace the particle 야 with 에요. Both of them are sentence ending particles, and you can put them after nouns, but 야 is informal and 에요 is formal. So if you say 에이미에요 instead of 에이미야, you can introduce your name in more formal way. Finally, 반가워요. Do you remember how to say nice to meet you in the informal way? 반가워. Here, you can simply add the particle 요 at the end of the verb. Then it becomes formal. 요 is a particle that can make a sentence polite. 반가워요. One more time, the formal way to introduce yourself is 안녕하세요, 에이미에요, 반가워요. The informal way to introduce yourself is 안녕, 에이미야, 반가워. Now it's time for Amy's insights. When you introduce yourself in Korea, it's polite to make a small bow. If you're a guy, bow with your hands at your sides. If you're a girl, bow with your hands in front of you. Bow from the waist. You don't have to dip down very far. Do you know how to say thank you in Korean? You will learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. 다음에 봐요. See you then. Hi everybody, I'm Amy. Welcome to koreanclass101.com's 3분 한국어. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Korean. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Korean. Today, we are going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. Are you ready? Then let's start. There are several ways to thank someone. Let's start with the most common phrase, 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다 means I do thanks or thank you. To say thank you very much, you just need to add 대단히, which means very much or greatly. 대단히 감사합니다. 대단히 감사합니다. 대단히 means greatly. So, 대단히 감사합니다 is like saying thank you very much. In the last lesson, we saw that Korean has formal and informal ways of speaking. 감사합니다 is pretty formal. If you want to thank someone more casually, you can use a shorter phrase. 고마워. 고마워. Let's break down those phrases. In the formal way of saying thank you, 감사합니다. 감사 means thank you. And 합니다 is a formal way to say to do. So 감사합니다 means I do thanks. And to make it less formal, we swap out 감사 with a different verb. That's 고마워. It has the same meaning of thank you, but it's more friendly. When someone thanks you, how should you answer? There's no set response like you're welcome in English. But there are a few things that you can say. The first thing is 아니에요. 아니에요. You literally are saying no. But this is a common and informal way to respond to someone thanking you. You're telling the person that there's nothing to bother thanking you for. There's another phrase that's used to respond to thank you in Korean. 천만해요. 천만해요. But it's not used all that often. You're better off with 아니에요 in most situations. Now it's time for Amy's insights. 감사합니다 sounds formal. 고마워 sounds informal. What if you want to sound kind of formal but still kind of friendly? In that case, you can upgrade the informal 고마워 to 
kumawayo. You see, you simply add yo at the end. Yo is the sentence ending particles that make sentences more polite. This is a nice way to thank your waiter. Kumawayo. Have you ever heard the phrase 안녕히 계세요 before? In our next lesson, you will learn this and more greetings in Korean. 여러분 감사합니다. 다음에 봐요. <laughs> 안녕하세요, Amy예요. 반가워요. Hi everybody, I'm Amy. Welcome to koreanclass101.com's 3분 한국어. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Korean. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying 감사합니다 and 고마워. In this lesson, we will learn some of the most common greetings used in Korea. Are you ready? Then let's start. The most common informal greeting is 안녕. 안녕. 안녕 means peace. We say it when we meet someone and also when we leave, but only to a friend or someone younger than us. The more standard greeting that you will hear a lot in Korea is 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Literally, 안녕하세요 means are you at peace? We use it to say hello when we meet someone. It's technically a question, but we don't always say it that way. 안녕하세요. Because 안녕하세요 is a question, some people answer it with 예, yeah, which means yes, before replying with the same question 안녕하세요. When it's time to leave, we have a couple different ways to say goodbye. If you're leaving and the other person is staying, say 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. 계세요 means Please stay. So, 안녕히 계세요 literally means please stay peacefully. A casual version of 안녕히 계세요 is 잘 있어. 잘 means well and 있어 means stay informally. So, 잘 있어 just means stay well. 잘 있어. If the other person is leaving, say 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. 가세요 means please go. So 안녕히 가세요 literally means please go peacefully. A casual version of 안녕히 가세요 is 잘 가. 잘 means well and 가 means go informally. So 잘 가 just means go well. Now you know lots of ways to greet people in Korean. Let's review them all once again. To greet someone casually, 안녕. To greet someone respectfully, 안녕하세요. To say goodbye respectfully when you're leaving and the other person is staying, 안녕히 계세요. To say goodbye casually when you're leaving, 잘 있어. To say goodbye respectfully, when the other person is leaving, 안녕히 가세요. To say goodbye casually, when the other person is leaving, 잘 가. During the next lesson, we will learn the meaning of the phrase 영어를 할수 있어요? Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our new 3분 한국어 lesson. 여러분 안녕히 계세요. 다음에 봐요. Hi everybody, I'm Amy. Welcome to KoreanClass101.com 3분 한국어. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Korean. In the last lesson, we learned the Chinese based numbers from 1 to 10. Have you already forgotten them? I'll tell you again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's great that you can count to 10. 
But did you know there's a whole other way to do that? That's right. In addition to the numbers based on Chinese characters, there are also the native Korean numbers that we have been using before we even had Chinese characters. Here they are. 하나, one, 하나. 둘, two, 둘. 셋, three, 셋. 넷, four, 넷. 다섯, five, 다섯. 여섯, six, 여섯. 일곱, seven, 일곱. 여덟, eight, 여덟. 아홉, nine, 아홉. 열, ten, 열. Which one do we use? We use both. Some things are counted using Chinese-based numbers and other things using native Korean numbers. For example, when telling time, we say the hour using a native Korean number and the minute using a Chinese-based number. So let's practice these numbers and learn how to say times too. Here's how to say the hour first. 3 o'clock is 3시. 3시. The native Korean number 3 is 셋, but we shorten it to 세 when we put it before a counter like 시. The last consonant, 시옷, of 셋 disappeared when it meets the counting unit. When you add 하나, 1, 둘, 2, 셋, 3, 넷, 4 with the counting units, the last vowel or consonant of each number will disappear. So 하나 is 1, but 1 o'clock is 한시. When 하나 meets the counting unit 시, the last vowel 아 disappears. 둘 is 2, but 2 o'clock is 두시. The last consonant 리을 disappeared. 넷 is 4. But 4 o'clock is 네시. Same thing here. The last consonant 시옷 disappeared. This rule is only for number 1 to 4. Otherwise, it is simply the Korean number plus 시. 10시, 10 o'clock. 7시, 7 o'clock. Now that you know how to say the hour, let's say the minute. The counter for minutes in Korean is 분. Be sure to use a Chinese-based number with this counter. Do you know how to say 310 in Korean? It's just 3시 10분. 3 in native numbers, plus the word for hour. 3시. Then 10 in Chinese numbers, 10. And finally the word for minutes, 분. 3시 10분. A little confusing, right? Don't worry, you will get the hang of it soon enough. Just remember that for hours we use Korean numbers and for minutes we use Chinese numbers. Now it's time for Amy's insights. Here are some other suffixes used to count things. 명 for people, 한 명, 두 명, 번 for the number of times something happens, 한 번, 두 번. In the next lesson, we're finally going to break 10 and learn the numbers from 11 to 100. You definitely don't want to miss it. So join us next time for more 3분 한국어. 다음에 또 만나요. Doksugung Doldamgil, Stone Wall Walkway. Do you know about Doksugung Doldamgil? Doksugung Doldamgil means Doksugung Stone Wall Walkway. In Korea, it's believed that couples who walk down this stone wall walkway will break up soon. It's because there used to be a divorce court near this walkway. Now the building houses the Seoul Museum of Art. Date 할 때에는 덕수궁 돌담길을 걷지 않을 거예요. I will never walk by the Dokseung Stone Wall walkway when dating. <목소리> 비 오는 날 결혼식. Wedding on a rainy day. Do you know about 비 오는 날 결혼식? 비 오는 날 결혼식 means wedding on a rainy day. 
In Korea, it's believed that if your wedding is on a rainy day, you live happily. It's because rain is essential for plants to grow, so people relate rain to growing happiness. In reality, people say this just to make couples feel better when it rains on their wedding day. 결혼식 날 비가 오면 부부가 잘 산다. If it rains on a couple's wedding day, they will live happily. Click here to go to koreanclass101.com to learn more. Sompungi Chishiksa, Fan Death. Do you know about Sompungi Chishiksa? Sompungi Chishiksa means fan death. In Korea, it's believed sleeping inside a closed room with a fan on will make you die because of hypothermia. It's because of false reports by the media that identified some death, which occurred in summer, as being caused by hypothermia due to using a fan. 더운 여름 밤에는 선풍기를 틀고 자지 마세요. During hot summer nights, don't sleep with the fan on. 연 먹기, eating taffy. Do you know about 연 먹기? 연 먹기 means eating taffy. In Korea, it's believed that eating yot or Korean taffy will help you pass an exam. It's because the Korean verb putta has multiple meanings, including pass and stick. So Korean people believe eating a sticky taffy will also help you pass an exam because it shares the same verb. 한국 사람들은 수험생에게 엿을 선물합니다. Korean people give taffy as a gift to test takers. Click here to go to koreanclass101.com to learn more. 숫자 4, the number 4. Do you know about 숫자 4? 숫자 4 means the number 4. In Korea, it's believed that the number 4 is a symbol of bad luck. In many elevators, the first floor is written as F, and some buildings do not even have the fourth floor. It's because the Sino Korean words for 4 and death sound the same, so people tend to associate the number 4 with death or bad luck. 한국 사람들은 숫자 4를 보면 죽음을 떠올립니다. When Korean people see the number 4, they think of death. 돼지 꿈, pig dream. Do you know about 돼지 꿈? 돼지 꿈 means pig dream. In Korea, it's believed that if a pig appears in your dream, it means you're going to have good luck. That's why some Korean people buy a lottery ticket after they dream of pigs. It's because the pig symbolizes wealth and luck since in the past, only rich people could eat pork. Thus, people believe pig dreams tell them that a lot of money is on the way. 돼지 꿈은 돈과 행운을 의미합니다. Dreaming of pigs is related to money and luck. Click here to go to craneclass101.com to learn more. 신발 선물, shoes as a gift. Do you know about 신발 선물? 신발 선물 means shoes as a gift. In Korea, it's believed that giving shoes to your girlfriend or boyfriend would make them run away. It's because brand new shoes will make someone run or walk. For that reason, Korean people don't give shoes as a gift to their loved one. 애인 사이에는 신발 선물을 하는 게 아니에요. It's better not to give shoes as gifts between lovers. 똥 밟기, stepping on feces. Do you know about 똥 밟기? 똥 밟기 means stepping on feces. In Korea, it's believed that if you step on poop, it'll bring you luck. It's because manure was valuable in agricultural societies. So until this day, feces symbolizes money and luck. 한국 사람들은 똥을 밟으면 재수가 좋다고 믿습니다. Korean people believe that stepping on poop brings luck.
Did you enjoy the series on Korean superstitions? Click here to go to koreanclass101.com to learn more. Dangnalge, chicken wings. Do you know about Dangnalge? Dangnalge means chicken wings. In Korea, it's believed that offering chicken wings to your husband or boyfriend will make him cheat on you. It's because the wings could make him fly away. In Korean, the word param means wind, but also cheating on a loved one. This is why people connect chicken wings with someone cheating because wings and wind infers one flying away. 당날개를 좋아하는 남자는 바람 피울지 몰라요. A man who likes chicken wings may cheat on you. 떨어지는 꿈, falling dreams. Do you know about 떨어지는 꿈? 떨어지는 꿈 means falling dreams. In Korea, it's believed that if you fall in your dream, you grow tall. It's because teenagers who are in growth spurts tend to have falling dreams. 한국 사람들은 떨어지는 꿈을 꾸면 키가 큰다고 믿습니다. Korean people believe that if you fall in your dream, you grow tall. Click here to go to koreanclass101.com to learn more. 